Welcome to Circuit Secrets. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build an ESP32 based Halloween prop controller. This prop controller has one channel of relay based motor control, MP3 and wave playback for sound effects, and is triggered by a PIR motion detector. The operation of the controller is pretty straightforward. When it detects motion, it turns on a motor and begins playing the next audio track according to a micro SD card. Here's the parts list I used for this controller. One ESP microcontroller development board, one DF player, one 5 volt relay module, one PIR motion detector module, two perf boards, two cable glands, one guitar stomp box sized aluminum enclosure for the main circuit, one plastic enclosure for the PIR, two banana style plugs and receptors to connect the motor, one old 5 volt DC power supply, one old Sparkomatic speaker that has seen better days, a few feet of ethernet cable for circuit wiring, speaker wire and sensor cabling. That stuff is great for everything. I talk about how it is a thrifty option in the video above. Now I will walk you through the entire design and prototyping process. First, I collected the specification information. This involved asking Jordan at My Flip in Life what he thought was important for a DIY animatronic controller. He suggested a basic controller that was easy to build, cheap, that had motion activated sound and movement on one motor. With this information in hand, I began the process of selecting parts and components for the build. I based my decisions on what was easily available, what I had in stock, and what was affordable. I chose the ESP32 because I had a few in stock and they operate at 3.3 volt logic level, so interfacing with the DF player module would be easy. I could have used the Raspberry Pi Pico, but I did not have a header version in stock and I wanted the parts to be mounted on boards. I chose the DF player module because it is compact, affordable, and easy to use. The ESP32 and DF player modules seem to have a lot of synergy, as the ESP32 runs at the same voltage levels and has three hardware serial ports, so no need to use soft serial. I also had the idea of using this project as a starting point for more advanced controllers, so the ESP32 Bluetooth capabilities and fairly ample I.O. seemed like a good choice. I chose the cheapest PIR motion sensor I could find on Amazon. I already had some single channel relay modules in stock, so I went with what I had for motor control. I had considered an H-bridge for speed control, but after talking with Jordan, we decided to make it as budget friendly as possible. With parts in hand, I sat down with a breadboard and the Arduino IDE. Prototyping this ESP32 module on a breadboard is a pain because it is too wide for my boards. Easy solution, I used female jumpers to bridge connections from the overhanging side. The first step was getting the DF player module working. I had never used this component so I had to do a little research to figure out its operation. Once I found the DF robot library things became simple. You can find it listed in the description below. With a quick tweak to an example sketch to confirm that the hardware serial would work where it called for soft serial, the module was running. I will go through the code for the controller towards the end of the video. The code is available for download at circuitsecrets.com. Next, I added the PIR and modified the sketch to output to the serial port the state for the GPIO pin I connected to the PIR. Once I had that working, then it was a matter of triggering the sound with the PIR and adding some timed latching to prevent disruption of playback. At this point, it was a matter of fine tuning some timing and setting an output for the relay. I added the relay module to the breadboard and added a couple of lines to the code. I tested a few more times through power up and cycled the sounds to confirm there were no problems. Then it was time to assemble the system. We will go through the rest of the build process after I cover the wiring. This is how I wired everything together. This is the version of the ESP32 I used. Compare the pin out of yours before attempting to connect it to the circuit. The DF player is wired to the ESP32 as shown in this diagram. We connect the serial port of the DF player to the ESP32 serial port 2 for communications. I connect a quarter inch guitar jack to the speaker output. With this configuration it is important there is no ground to the case of the controller as the jack would be chassis grounded then. Next the grounds of the DF player and the ESP32 are connected together. Finally, the positive 5 volt rails of both devices are tied together. 
Connecting the ESP32 and DF player together is a snap because they both can operate on a 5 volt bus but use 3.3 volt logic. The PIR is wired to the ESP32 as shown. The ground and positive pins are connected to the ground and positive buses as shown. The output pin is connected to GPIO pin 13 of the ESP32. The relay module is wired to the ESP32 as shown in this diagram. The power and ground of the input side of the module are connected to the positive and ground buses. The control pin for the relay module is connected to GPIO pin 23 of the ESP32 board. The common and normally open pins of the relay module are connected to the banana plug receptacles. Here is a rundown of the construction method. I started with two enclosures. One small plastic one I used to mount the motion sensor. This required one hole pilot drilled then sized with a step drill. The other metal enclosure I used to house the ESP32, DF player and relay module. This one needed a hole for the speaker jack, the two banana plug jacks, the power line from the power supply and the wire for the motion detector. Once the holes were drilled in the same manner as before, I fitted the cable glands. If you are unfamiliar with cable glands, they are used to provide strain relief and prevent the fraying of wires on sharp edges. Then I mounted the ESP32 and the DF player to perf boards so I could securely solder the connections and have a foundation to work from. I wired them together and wired the relay module in. I wired in the speaker jack. I then fed the wire through the cable glands, tied some knots in the wires, and connected the wires to the boards. I covered the back of the boards with electrical tape to prevent grounding on the metal case. It would have been better to use standoffs and securely fasten them down, but I had none in stock and forgot to order any. Once the boards were fitted, I installed the banana jacks and guitar jack into the case. I buttoned everything up, plugged in the speaker, plugged in the power, and it worked like a charm. <laughs> Into the source code. First we call the library for the DF player. A link to the library is in the description below. Next we create an instance of the DF robot DF player mini. Now we create a variable we will use for latching. When I use the term latching I am referring to the method of preventing an operation from firing repetitively when a trigger event occurs. So when a value swings from say 0 to 1 and stays there for some time instead of repeatedly executing a section of code, it is caused to execute once and is locked out until the value returns to zero. Now we come to setup. In setup we set the pin mode for the PIR detector pin 13 as input. Then we set the pin mode for pin 23, the relay control pin, as output. Next we begin serial 2. Serial 2 is an extra serial port of the ESP32. It is the third serial port on the device. This is the port connected to the DF player. We then start a while loop that waits until the serial port is ready for use. Now we call our instance of the DF player and tell it to begin on serial 2. This is in a while loop and this causes the code to wait until the DF player is ready to receive commands. Now we set the volume of the DF player to 25. The maximum value is 30 but it sounded distorted to me at that level. Now we play the first track using our instance of the DF player. We then delay for a few seconds before entering the loop. Inside the loop the first thing we do is create an integer and set it to the value output by the PIR using digital read. A value of 1 means motion has been detected. A value of 0 means no motion detected. Now we come to an if statement where we check the state of the PIR. If motion has been detected in the input val equals 1, we check the state of the latch. The variable used for the latch is called toggle because it toggles back and forth. If the latch is zero, that means it is not locked out, so we execute the next section of code. Here we tell our instance of DF player to play the next track. Then we set the toggle to one, locking it. Then we turn on the motor with a call to digital write to pin 23, the pin attached to the relay module control. Then we delay for around eight seconds and turn the relay back off with another digital write call. Now we come to the else statement that handles the rest of the latch code enabling the rest of the code to execute once again. This else is paired with the if statement that checks the value of the PIR. If no motion is detected, the toggle is set back to zero, enabling the motion detection reaction once again. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. If you want to see more advanced animatronic controllers, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.